Welcome to our news plan tool Plan Spec Driven. My name is Carsten Beinecke and I'm the product manager of our plan tools. Plan Spec Driven allows you to assign catalog data of AutoCAD Plan 3D to your P9D symbols and use them for your 3D piping. In addition, you can create bill of materials from your P9D drawings before starting with 3D. Plan Spec Driven raises your design process to a whole new level which usually can be found only in high-end piping software. It's something completely new, never been seen with AutoCAD P9D or Plan 3D. This video helps you to understand the concept of Plan Spec Driven and how it works. Having said this, Plan Spec Driven consists of several features which can be turned on or off, depending on your requirements and workflow. This is why we show three different levels of complexity in this video. We see here a simple example of a P9D where the lines already have data for spec and size. One line is connected to another P9D. Now let's see what happens when we insert a butterfly valve in a line. It looks that nothing happened except the usual automatic tagging. But if we look in the properties of the valve, we see a bunch of properties filled with data from the spec. You can of course define which values from your spec you want to see in your P9D symbol. If you are thinking about creating a bill of material from your P9D drawings, you obviously would need more data from your spec. Now we insert some more wells. If you use the context menu, you can jump to the node in the tree representing your symbol. What you see here is a logical structure of your project's P9D drawings. The green check sign informs you that this symbol has catalog data assigned to it. The red circle means that this symbol does exist only in P9D. If you insert a reducer, Plan Spec Driven lets you know that no catalog data can be found. Of course, because size 1 and 2 are equal. If we look at the tree, we see a red symbol meaning that the reducer has no catalog data. If we change the size of the line to 150, we see that the reducer has catalog data now. And the check valve has been updated to 150 and the catalog data have been updated as well. Changing the size back to 100 again, Plan Spec Driven so called attribute flow tells you that the reducer is obsolete now. The attribute flow propagates spec and size between the line segments of one pipeline group following certain rules. If we change the spec of the main line of line number 10, the new spec flows to the branching line segment and from there to the connected line in the other PNID. Plan Spec Driven asks you whether or not you want to update the other PNID drawing right now. If your decision is no, you can update the changes later at any time. If your decision is yes, Plan Spec Driven opens the other PNID if necessary and updates the line. Since all our PNID symbols have catalog data from the spec now, we can of course create a bill of material from these data. Here you see a simple example created with our plant reporter. Having catalog data for your P9D symbols and being able to create a bill of material from that is just the first advantage. Even more important is using the data in your 3D drawing. If you look at the tree, you may think, well, that looks like the P9D line list of AutoCAD Plan 3D. But this is where the similarity ends. You will see why in a minute. Let's start routing the line segments from the pump to the two tanks. If you look at the line segments in the tree, you recognize that the red circles are green now. This tells you that these lines do exist in P9D and 3D and that they are linked. Inserting a valve changes the status to green as well. Now we add the remaining valves. Of course using the data from your P9D and 3D looks nice, but in reality your project is changing during that process. So what happens if something changes in your P9D or 3D drawing? Let's change the tag of a valve in P9D. Now the status changes from green to cyan, telling me that there are inconsistencies between the P9D and 3D. You can make a right click on the node and select show inconsistencies, or simply click on the inconsistency button to see all inconsistencies in your project. What we see now is that the number and tag properties differ between P9D and 3D. Making a right click on an inconsistency gives you options. They depend on the type of the inconsistency. 
If we zoom onto the 3D object, we can quickly see which 3D valve is affected. If you want to fix the inconsistency, you can decide if you want to copy the value from PIN-ID to 3D or vice versa. When we copy the value from PIN-ID, the inconsistency is solved and the status in the tree changes from cyan to green again. You can define which properties should be considered for the inconsistency check and what solution for an inconsistency is allowed. As mentioned at the beginning, there are features you can add if you want. First we use the autopipe command from the context menu. Blend spec driven adds flange symbols and of course the flange symbols have catalog data as well. When to add flanges can be configured. Flanges can be added depending on the end types of the assigned catalog data. If needed, you can also insert a flange manually. Blend spec driven will then add the opposing flange automatically. Another optional feature is the update or replacement of PIN-ID symbols. If you insert a general valve, Blend spec driven may not know which catalog data to choose. Then the user selects one and based on the selection the PIN-ID symbol will be replaced. Later we will see another example for that. Creating a bill of material now shows more data. If we insert the newly added valve from PIN-ID, we see that not only the valve shows a green status, but the flanges as well. So they are linked as well. But what happens if you insert a 3D object without using the plant spec driven tree? As an example, we add two flanges in the pipe as well. Now you can link the PIN-ID symbol through the context menu to the 3D object. We do this for both flanges. Through this linking, the 3D object gets the data from the PIN-ID symbol, so data like tech do not show as an inconsistency. And of course, the status is green now. In this last level we show some more features you may want to use. We insert a T at line 10. And now we change the size of the branching line to 50. First of all, you see that the T symbol will be replaced with a reduced T symbol and the annotation will be replaced as well. In addition to that, the attribute flow propagates the size to the connected pin ID. For size 50, we can choose between lapped and welding neck flange. We choose the lapped flange and see a different flange symbol, but that's not mandatory. When using show in tree again, we see not only the flanges, but gaskets as well. Looking at the lap flange, we even see the welding neck border of the lapped flange. These fastener type objects do not exist as PNID symbols in the drawing, but in the database. Since valves and flanges had been inserted in the advanced level part, we run autopipe again to update the existing lines with the setup of the expert level. The bill of material shows the fasteners as well. If we insert a valve in 3D again, we see that now even the gaskets get linked to PIN-ID. I hope this video has explained the possibilities of plant spec driven and the various options you can choose from, and how this helps you to become more productive, work faster and create less errors. There are a lot more details not shown in this video, so if you have questions about the product do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you for your attention.